One of the big challenges that's become clear from Volan's Tomorrow's Capitalism inquiry is that currently the dynamics between companies and financial markets is not set up to fund the kind of transformation and the urgency of the transformation needed. Companies that can see the need and the path to their own transformation are not necessarily able to convey the business case to their investors and at the same time investors and financial institutions that want to put their money to good use are not able to see the opportunities and the companies to put their money into. This isn't just a matter of introducing different sets of people to each other, it's a matter of everyone having to step up in different ways. Businesses need to get bolder and articulate long-term strategies in a much more robust way to their investors and financial markets. Investors and banks need to start experimenting with new business models for themselves as well as how to invest in new business models from companies. Regulators and policymakers need to review the current policies and look at what incentives they are giving and whether tweaks are needed to be made. It's interesting to note for a second that the way that capitalism is structured today has just evolved. No one sat back and designed what it should look like and said it needs to work this way. It's evolved, and it's evolved by businesses and investors, and then different types of business and different types of investors thinking they had an opportunity to make money. The biggest problem I find today in capitalism is that the people whose money it is have absolutely, typically, have absolutely no understanding of how the system works, and very, find it very, very difficult to engage whether it's a bank or an insurer or an asset owner, an asset manager, a pension scheme, whatever, they find it very hard to know where to start. As Aviva, we run money for 33 million people. Hardly ever do they ever ask how their votes have been used on their behalf. My team votes at 5,500 company AGMs on behalf of those 33 million people. Um, over the last 10 years, we've voted half a million resolutions, literally half a million resolutions. And over the same duration, we've probably had maybe 200 questions over 10 years from the end investors about how their votes are being used. So we have a, a democratic deficit that's an abyss uh, in the space of the corporate stewardship space, genuinely. So that has to be something that we address and teach people how their money is invested into companies, how it generates a return and how they in turn put their money back into the system to help it grow. One important point about the systemic investment logic is that we move away from what I call the single asset paradigm, that we select one stock, one bond, one infrastructure project at the time. We really have to look at portfolios from a systemic point of view and select assets of different asset classes in a way that is synergistic with a vis-a-vis -vis a specific impact agenda. One of the issues about sustainable finance is that it's mostly focused on secondary markets, stock exchanges, for instance. But emissions occur in the real economy, and that's also where we build resilience, and that's where justice and inclusivity emerge. So we really need to think about how can we deploy capital in the real economy. We need a set of standards for environmental, social, and governance information, sometimes called non-financial, sometimes extra-financial, that are used by all companies, that they report on, that are audited, just like we have standards for financial information. We didn't always have them. That was something that came from the state. It was when the SEC was formed in the United States. In Europe, it's the International Accounting Standards Board. This talk that we're going to get there through market forces and investors are going to demand it is naive. The way you get the standards, here's the standard, here's how you measure this thing, you have to report on it, it has to be audited, these standards will be social constructs, they'll be man-made, they'll be imperfect just like accounting is imperfect, but it will be the basis of the shared reality and we need to get the non-financial accounting standards at the same level as the financial accounting standards so you've got the same quality of information and you've got the same reliability and the same confidence in it so that these can be factored into the investment decisions that are made by the portfolio managers so you can get the shift in capital that we're talking about. Ultimately, society at large, that's individuals like you and me, need to start asking questions of banks and pension funds to make sure that our money is working in a way that's aligned with our values and the world we want to build.